If you collect firearms for their historical value or are a fan of unique designs, you're probably familiar with Heckler & Koch of Germany. HK has produced some of the most iconic firearms and prototypes in modern history, and tons of their firearms see military service currently. Nowadays, they continue to be known for innovation, design, and quality. Although listening to the civilian market might not be one of their strong suits, the current demand for a semi-auto MP7 is so high, it's the only thing people will comment on their Instagram anytime they post a photo. One of the things I find really cool about HK is that back in the 70s, they produced the first polymer frame striker fire handgun. They beat Glock to market by about 12 years. This handgun was called the VP-70. It looked like an astronaut sidearm and was designed with the use of a shoulder stock, which doubled as a holster, that when attached to the pistol, gave the ability to fire in three round bursts. Knowing that many civilians were not able to own firearms that fell into the category of machine gun, HK also produced a civilian version known as the VP-70Z. The Z, meaning Zivil, which I guess is German for not allowed to own cool stuff. The major difference being that the VP-70Z cannot accept the shoulder stock of its NFA counterpart. The VP-70 was designed as a pistol slash submachine gun that was easily concealable for West Germans to get behind East German lines and assassinate Soviet soldiers or VIPs, aka cool Cold War stuff. You are a true patriot. At 3 a.m. a few weeks ago, I was browsing Gunbroker and happened upon one. I've had my eye on a VP-70Z for a while now. I grew up playing Resident Evil 4 and Leon Kennedy uses a VP-70 later in the game. In the game, it's called the Matilda, but it's very obviously a VP-70. It was my favorite gun to blast the Plagas with. And from that first playthrough of Resident Evil 4, I knew that one day I would be the proud owner of a VP-70. Resident Evil isn't the first piece of media to prominently feature the VP-70. Honestly, its unique look led it to be used in all sorts of media, most notably being the sidearm for the Colonial Marines in Alien 2. The handgun, this is a Heckler & Koch VP-70. It's not made anymore, but it looks very futuristic. Futuristic enough to use for the film. It was also most recently featured in the remake of Resident Evil 2. The VP-70Z I found on Gunbroker arrived just the other day and I finally had the chance to shoot it. I now understand why this wasn't HK's flagship gun. First, the good. The pistol itself has a very thought out design. For the time it came out, this thing must have been super innovative. It doesn't require any tools to take down. All you do is pull this little latch near the trigger and then slide the slide back and kind of angle it till it comes off the frame. If you wanted to take it down even further, you could use the bottom of your magazine to go in the little indent on the back of the slide. This allows you to remove the striker. Because it has a fixed barrel, the engineers at HK decided to make sure that the rifling on the barrel was deep. What it allows is excess gas to blow past the bullet when shooting and it reduces the amount of material needed for the slide. Uh, I learned this by watching a Forgotten Weapons video. The magazine boasts an 18 round capacity. Not just amazing for the time it was produced, it's still extremely generous to this day. The magazine also doesn't need to be loaded like a traditional pistol magazine, where you would push the cartridge down on top of each other and under the lips of the magazine. Instead, you load the magazine like an MP5, pushing the bullets into the magazine and they stagger themselves on top of each other. This honestly is an awesome design and it really contributes to the fact that the original intent of this handgun was for it to be a machine gun. The sights are interesting. Essentially, the best way I could describe it is that it uses an optical illusion to create the front sight post. If you take a look at it, there are two walls perpendicular to the rear sight posts. These walls create a shadow between them that becomes your front sight. I'm not sure what made HK do this, and I've never seen anything like it before or after this pistol. It takes a second to get the hang of it, but once you do, like an optical illusion, it clicks for your brain and it's all you see from there forward. Now to the bad. The best way to describe the trigger would be 
it feels like a staple gun. The trigger is 15 pounds and is double action only. I can assume that this was done probably because the machine gun version did not have the cross bolt safety that is featured on the civilian version. So the trigger was made purposely heavy as a safety precaution. The magazine release is located on the bottom of the grip, which confused me at first because the manual safety is close to, but not exactly where the magazine release would be found on a modern handgun. A cool little detail is if you look closely near where the magazine release is, you can see where the indent was that was filled in where the stock would go on the NFA version. Inserting and removing the magazine is kind of a chore as well, as the gun holds the magazine tightly and it can be tough to remove and insert because it requires a specific angle to kind of get the magazine in there. Honestly, I feel like a spoiled child talking about my complaints, like this is some sort of buyer's review, as the modern handguns of today have had like 50 years of evolution. There's no way that I could recommend the VP70 to be your defensive handgun, especially because it's essentially a collector's item today. Prices are pretty high, but something about the trigger just adds to how cool the gun is. And I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention the cool factor. The cool factor is something intangible that maybe only I feel towards this handgun, but it's there. The appearances in popular media, the look, the feel, the garbage trigger, the fact that it was the first polymer frame striker fire handgun, all of it, good and bad, come together to make the gun what it is. When it got to the range, comparisons were made to High Point and the Walter PPK. I started calling it my expensive High Point as a joke. It's much more than that. I love it and I'm happy to own a piece of history. If you like videos like this, let us know and subscribe to the Machine Gun Nest.